Well, welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Irv Risch. And today, I'd like to talk to you about a earthquake on Storytime. Yes, the year, I believe, was 1906, when San Francisco had this great earthquake. Well, as the story goes... As the clock struck midnight, it ushered in another promising day for beautiful San Francisco. That fateful day crept upon the city quietly and peacefully while most of the residents slept. It was approaching that early quiet hour just before the great city awakened for a new day. Suddenly the earth heaved and shook and great stone buildings began to rock back and forth with frightening cries. Every uh, steeple, every sleeper leapt, leaped from its bed and rushed into the streets. The shaking increased and became violent, and the people ran in panic. Cries and shrieks, pieces of... uh, Pieces the early morning, pierces the early morning darkness, along with thundering crashes of falling walls and breaking timbers. For three minutes, there is a deafening roar as structure after structure buckled and then collapsed. In magnifying the horror of the scene, fires breaking out, and for four days they burned out of control. Thousands of people perished. 300,000 were suddenly homeless. $250 million worth of property damage. And it was all destroyed in a moment. How tragic. How devastating. But listen to the story of an even more uh, momentum day and of a much worse tragedy that took place About the year 33 A.D., a man was tried and falsely uh, accused and for false offenses and the, the crowd declaring him guilty. His accusers uh, persuaded the governor to waive his power of pardon and to sentence this man to death by crucifixion. The angry crowd surged about this man as he uh, patiently carried his cross up the hill where he was to be lifted up for all to see. On the brow of that hill, they crucified him. The title was placed above him. His thorn-crowned head, it read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. They crucified him, and sitting down, they watched him there. They were there, two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And as they passed by, reviling at him, wagging their heads and saying, If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priest mocked him, with the scribes and the elders, and said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. The earth did quake and the rocks rent. But one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side and forth with came there out blood and water. And this is the gospel, the good news. It was an appalling and unjust act on the part 
of those who crucified Christ, the Son of God. But the shedding of his blood on the cross that day is the basis on which he is able to offer you today salvation from your sins and the certain knowledge that you will be with him in heaven for all eternity. Yes, uh, yet were not you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. Have you ever really considered the fact that the Son of God has given his life so that you can stand in a guaranteed peace in the presence of a holy God? You may say, I don't want to think about the next life right now. I'm too busy. I think about it later when I have more time. But wait, how many millions of dollars would some of those earthquake victims have given if only they could have been given one more year, one more day, or one hour? But no, God's time has come, and in a moment they were swept into eternity. Did their wealth help them? No. All their possessions, money, and business were transformed into a heap of ruin. Truly, the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abide forever. 1 John 2.17 Don't ignore the certainty of coming judgment and the reality of eternity. Weigh those serious questions. Are your sins forgiven? Are you saved for an eternity in heaven? You may answer, I am doing my best. I hope to get to heaven based on my religious life and my mercy of, and the mercy of God. However, the Bible states the opposite, you know, about God loving the world and giving his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have ever life. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, Jesus is Lord, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9. God does not ask you to do anything to receive salvation. It is an offer to you by his love, kindness. And he asks you to do nothing but believe by faith. The work has already been done. Even so must the Son of Man, Jesus, be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John three fourteen and 15. Well, that's my message for you today, and I will end with the same as I always do. God is out here. You can find him. He's in your Bible. With that, I will end. Bye for now.